It has been six years since the conception of Atlas' third production team, Studio Zero. This new studio, featuring some all-star Atlas staff members, as well as new hires, have come together with the singular goal of making something from Zero. And after all this time, we see the fruit of their labor in the form of metaphor, Re-Fantasio, Atlas's first attempt at a large-scale fantasy game releasing in 2024. But what exactly is Metaphor about? While only Atlas can answer that with absolute certainty, that has not stopped me from trying. I've combed every interview and analyzed every single frame possible to provide at least a solid foundation for fan speculation and answer any questions you may have, as there are some fascinating discoveries that I may have unearthed that I'd love to share with you. But first, a bit of context. Before we had Metaphor, we simply knew this project as Project Refantasy. And for many years, we received bits and pieces of concept art, promotional videos of some French people in the woods, and a knight eating a pigeon for five minutes. It was exceptionally bizarre. So for more than a while now, fans have had almost no idea what kind of game Re-Fantasy would even resemble. More than a few began to believe it had been cancelled altogether. But now we can put those fears to rest, as we have the game's official name drop and a promotional video containing gameplay and cutscenes for us to better understand Studio Zero's vision. So let's talk about it. But before the breakdown, a brief moment of your time. Hello there, if you've never been here before. I'm Johnny Awesome, and this is my YouTube channel. I'm obsessed with Atlas games. Dare I say, hysterical. And Refantasio is just... I, I'm at a loss for words. Except I'm not. This video is very long. So I'll keep this brief. If you enjoy Atlas content and want to see more news on Metaphor, Refantasio, please hit that subscribe button. And with that, we're ready to go. In the beginning, the first shot of the trailer asks us a very nuanced question, with modern Tokyo presented in the background. What if the world we live in is their utopia? It's a multifaceted question in nature, but in this sentence, who is we and who is they? Metaphor has been long described as a mirror of our modern times, but in a fantasy world. So my belief is that the we and they are interchangeable in this context. Metaphor may focus on the paradox of how in our real world we use fantasy to escape the neurosis of everyday life and dream of fighting dragons and questing to save a kingdom. But if a fantasy world were real, what would they dream of? Perhaps a land absent of sorcery with giant glass towers where even the fear of darkness has been conquered as bright lights illuminate the world, where you don't have to live in fear of a rogue witch turning you into a toad. Just a thought. Based on this alone, one would believe this may be a narrative of the popular isekai or other world genre, as our next scene includes a group of citizens gazing up at five distinguished figures, declaring an announcement. Whoever hath truly earned the greatest faith of the citizenry shall ascend to the throne, indicating that these five are either the king's court, or perhaps high-ranking religious figures in Metaphor's world, tasked with the duty to find this fictional kingdom's new leader, as the current king was slain in his bed rather recently, and the next of kin has been subjugated to a decade-long curse and is not fit to rule. Maybe the game will have multiple endings or a branching path system, where, in one, we become the new king, but in another, we discover a way to remove this prince's curse. Right after that scene, we see some members of the populace reacting to a form of magic being placed into their mind. Some believe this to be our real world, given the attire of some of the populace, giving credence to the isekai comparison. But in the same scene, we see a small elf ear peeking out between this humanoid's bicep. So it's logical to assume this is in fact the world of Refantasio. The source of this magical ability appears to be a giant face in the sky. Where did it come from? And where did it go? Is it named Cotton Eye Joe? I have no idea, but I do have a theory that the magic being delivered in this scene is the game's archetype system, as the orange glow is nearly identical, with common folk being given divine power from what we can only assume is a god in the sky. 
Our quest begins as the traveling boy does his namesake and starts riding a sword like a skateboard. I wonder where they got that idea from. We also get a glimpse of what the capital city resembles and a view at some rather non-traditional building designs. This building in the capital seems especially suspicious, having a striking, almost futuristic design. Perhaps Metaphor's world is not just medieval, but high fantasy, given we also see the Gauntlet Runner showcased in the trailer, an interesting hybrid between sky and land vehicle, which I assume we will use to traverse the game's non-open world. Throughout the trailer, we also see a UI depicting a time and date, as well as a calendar system. Given Katsur Hashino's previous games and how he's spoken about wanting to create a title to deal with people's anxiety, it's safe to assume this could be a real-time system and missions in-game could have a set amount of time that need to be completed. But this is largely speculation. A detail with some evidence behind it is that in this trailer we do appear to see the main character's lips flapping which could mean a possibly voiced protagonist, which is rare for Atlas developers to consider. After a brief view of our surroundings and party members, the trailer then dives straight into the gameplay, where we see Metaphor's primary mechanic, archetypes. These special powers bestowed upon the user, in my personal opinion, are the idea of a classic RPG class archetype. When you really break it down, what comes to mind when I say the word? destroyer. Using the context of everyday life and your own experience with high fantasy, you may imagine a hulking barbarian with an axe who overpowers their foes. But in the world of metaphor, human words may have special significance, as much of the game's iconography deals with books and words being stricken from their pages. In the trailer, we see a large variety of archetype names from Seeker, Magic Seeker, Fighter, Knight, Thief, Swordmaster, Magic Knight, and even more advanced sounding archetypes like Ninja, Paladin, Trickster, and Soul Hacker. Each of these archetypes may function similar to classes found in past RPGs, as each one appears to have an icon, and these same icons are located in the game's academy, a place where we go to study archetypes and inherit new skills, not too different from the Cathedral of Shadows or the Velvet Room, locations from previous Atlas games. Behind this scholar, we see a golden statue with a resemblance to the Vitruvian Man, a famous Renaissance drawing from Leonardo da Vinci, famous for depicting a synthesis of artistry and scientific findings. But speaking of synthesis, this also appears to be a function inside of Metaphor's turn-based battles. The B button in this trailer opens up the option for a team-up attack, where it appears a resource can be consumed to perform an action in tandem with another party member, which feels reminiscent to Digital Devil Saga's combo skills. For example, if two party members have access to Taru Kaja, then you can use Synthesis to change this spell into Ma Taru Kaja, but eating up two turns by doing so. Synthesis could also have a meaning outside of gameplay, as by definition, it is a combination of two intersecting principles, Thesis and Antithesis. In Metaphor's case, our world could be Thesis, and the fantasy realm antithesis. What does that mean? Uh... To paraphrase Hegel, advancement cannot occur without both thesis and antithesis. The fuck? Yeah, what he said. Outside of synthesis, there is a new retry option, which allows players to turn back the clock and perhaps take back a turn once per battle. Speaking of turns, the keen-eyed may have noticed a similar feature that was present first in Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, the press turn system may or may not be present inside of Metaphor Refantasio. In this clip, the dragon deals a critical hit. However, its press turn does not go down. Is this the same exact system or not? One would believe so, but at the same time, the developers have gone on multiple times to say, we want to make something that is new and that is ours and not our predecessors. While it is true the developers of Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne and Digital Devil Saga are also working on Metaphor Refantasio, I think we can all agree after having all these new ideas, a new setting, a new studio, to just recycle previous combat systems with a new coat of paint would be a bit reductive. Outside of possible press turns, 
I can see that the game features a front and back row system, akin to similar games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. In those games, characters in the front row deal maximum damage with melee weapons, but have a higher chance to be targeted, while characters in the back row do half damage with physical attacks, but have the boon of being targeted less from enemy attacks. After a battle concludes, we get to see our party members walk what almost appears to be a trail of blood as they receive rewards. Money, EXP, archetype EXP, but also a new element. Or should I say old? Magnetite has been used in past Shin Megami Tensei games. However, it is also important to note that Magnetite is real. It is a actual element that is magnetic inside of human brains. And as we know, Refantazio deals with human imagination. So my working theory is, this is a currency that will be used to develop and create new archetypes for your party. And speaking of our party, we have quite the varied cast. From the outset, Katsura Hashino stated he wanted to craft a story about a journey where people of different backgrounds come together and learn more about themselves. In the trailer, we see a variety of different fantasy races and some very original ones all coming together for a common goal. First up, we have the traveling boy, our protagonist, who may not exactly be human. I know what you're thinking. No, man, that's definitely a human, but just, just we'll, we'll come back to that. Often in fantasy novels, the humanoid races could be described as a Hur, a Highlander, a Homs, etc. Because there is a distinct difference between human and man in this game setting. Next, we have a horned man who is called Stroll, who appears to be a race similar to the Traveling Boy, but with the additional feature of antlers or horns. In the trailer, we see two other characters, the announcer with very pronounced large horns and the teacher at the academy, who has a similar length to Stroll. We then see Hulkenberg, the red-headed elf, which for a while was the mascot for Project Re Fantasy. We see her new design here in Metaphor, and I'm a very large fan, but you know what? It's an Atlas game. One mascot is not enough. We also have Hizme, who we see in this scene, with the prince, leading me to believe he is assistant to royalty. At first, I believed he's made to be a rabbit, but I don't think rabbits traditionally have wings, but this does appear to be a new fantasy race unique to metaphor. And rounding out our party of five, we have Galica the Pixie, who, I mean, come on, it's an Atlas game. You have to have a pixie, am I right? Not only do I believe her to be a reference to past Atlas titles featuring pixie navigators, but also to the manga series Berserk, as its main character Guts also had an elf companion named Puck, who Galica shares a resemblance to. But I am curious if she is the only companion for us, as in the pause menu, we do see the option to, well, select our companions. However, this could also mean to just swap out our reserve party members, which we see quite a few potential ones. We see a pink fox girl covered in grime from a past battle. We see a three-eyed woman or a triclops we forge a bond with, as well as a large-eyed woman who we can only assume is a key player. But don't worry, it's not a harem game. There's also a man in a suit holding a pink-haired animal girl. This looks to me almost like a dog ear. But this gentleman appears in one of the game's cutscenes, which I can assume is at the end of the game. His face is just simply obscured by Hulkenberg's halberd. While it's not completely clear if all of these characters will be joining us as combat units, it's safe to assume, yes, there will be a lot of combat. But who exactly are we fighting in Metaphor Refantazio? Well, the answer may surprise you. I have combined the DNA of the world's most evil animals to make the most evil creature of them all. It turns out it's man. That's right, I think it's humans. Throughout this trailer, we see a variety of enemies with the Latin word for man in their names. These being Homo Tenta and Great Worm Homo Batera, two beings with distinct human characteristics, specifically the Great Worm having a humanoid face and honestly just the most grotesque appearance I've ever seen. But I believe humans take this form when in the world of Re Fantasio. How did they get there? I don't know. To further prove my point, in the Famitsu screenshot for the capital, we see one of the onlookers spreading the rumor that a human attacked a village. Also in the promotional video, we see someone ask the question, is that a human? 
This leads me to believe that when humans enter the world of Refantasio, some spatial anomaly happens, and that the strongest characters of this game's universe were once human in nature. In the shot where someone is saying the truth of the humans is laid bare, we see a figure with a misshapen hand and a devilish horn, covered in a purple aura. There's also that apple statue, which does not look like a statue upon further investigation. Maybe this too is a transformed human? In a way, he looks to be something reminiscent to Hieronymus Bosk's depiction of demons, someone Berserk's creator also took inspiration from. There's also one more human in this trailer, and that's at the end. This mysterious man has a cat, and if I had to guess, he's most likely the creator of the story that Refantasio takes place in, but ascended and now lives inside of his own work. And it looks to be that our traveling boy will one day come across this omnipotent figure, perhaps having a chance to rewrite what has already been written. Now, I've tried to condense as much information as possible with Refantasio. However, some things that were said six years ago may not be true now, despite Katsura Shino stating he's not aiming to make a triple A game. The visuals of this title are extremely impressive to me personally. This will be a 4K game, but also be available for PlayStation 4. So that's that's very exciting, and if I'm just getting more of my opinions out there, I'm just also elated to now know that Shoji Meguro will have another chance to do a Gregorian-style uh, composition, but not be limited to Nintendo DS hardware. That's that's a big win for me personally. And what can I say? I just I can't wait to learn more. What are archetypes? What is synthesis? What are humans? What are you? We may not have to wait too long to find out, as on the 20th we will receive a Japanese live stream with some classic Atlas hosts playing the game and discussing more details. So if you're wondering when we're going to know more, there you go. However, as enthusiastic as I am to have, you know, the A-team back together and re-fantasy to actually come out, I and some others do have some criticisms because this was sold as a new beginning. We're making a new game from zero. However, there's Mataru Kaja, there's the Velvet Room, there's a Bond system, there's calendars, there's a Persona 5 menu. Are these social stats? Why does this archetype look so similar to a Persona? And yeah, that's the elephant in the room here. And really, Atlas, your third blue-haired protagonist Man, which is honestly a shame. For people that don't enjoy Shin Megami Tensei or Persona, why would they pick this game up? ReFantasy needs to do its best to tell the player, hey, this is something completely different. If you did not like Persona 5, would you give this game a shot? Truthfully, I, I don't know. And I want this game to succeed. I want people to give this a shot because everyday high school life does not appeal to everybody, but a fantasy RPG is classic and could have a giant scope of getting new people into the Atlas brand. That in Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne was over 20 years ago. Have we really not developed a system superior or different enough than press turn? That would really take the wind out of my sails. But despite that, the game looks promising. Its visuals are like nothing I've ever seen. I'm a big fan of the color scheme, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, but tell me, what do you think about Metaphor Refantasio? Are you excited? Or are you like, mm, Persona 3 Reload looks a little better? Honestly, I just... I gotta stay alive till 2024. That's my new mo That's my mission right now. As always, thank you so much for enjoying. I hope, despite the trailer's length, you can learn something new. Honestly, I'm very excited to learn more about what humans are doing in this game setting and what that mirrored commentary is all about. That, on top of just you know the Atlas standard gameplay, it's going to be a great time. I have no doubts. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I will do my best to update everyone with any Refantasio news I discover. So make sure to follow my Twitter and my YouTube because I'm going to be on top of things. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. And yeah, see you in 2024 or sooner. We might get another trailer after all. Here's hoping. <laughs> okay. Thanks a bunch, everybody. See you next time. Bye.